Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we continue to delve into the land of serendipity, specifically the books relating to a unicorn that may go by the name of Morgan. He's never actually named in Morgan Mine. Today we are looking at Misty Morgan, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Remember that there is a time for work and a time for play. Oh, this is going to be one of those stories. Mm-hmm. This is only the second printing. And this one was definitely written after Morgan Mine, because the original copyright is 87, and Morgan Mine was 82. Dedicated to the memory of my brother Robert, who died without seeing what I have seen, but shared so much that I might see what I have seen. Stephen. Ooh, that's a pretty illustration. Mm-hmm. Paper's different on this one. It's less glossy. Hmm. If you gazed beyond the crashing waves and rolling tides to the place where the sea becomes sky, you would find an emerald island where rainbows begin and the moon rests after each night's journey. It was from this island that dreams came forth and spread themselves like a gentle fog across the land, bringing children bits of delight when they closed their eyes and went to sleep. Dreams of a gentler time and place. Now on this island of dreams was a castle, a magnificent thing of heavy stone, draped in ivy with a worn wooden drawbridge that it was always left down. Hanging from every wall were clocks that ticked and talked the whole day through. There were alarm clocks, cuckoo clocks, grandfather clocks, and even a grandmother clock that hung beside the stove in the kitchen. It was in this castle that a princess lived, a very pretty princess dressed in pinks and purples. The very pretty princess lived by time and time alone. She would rush from one clock to the other, always checking the time. She was always rushing here and rushing there, crying, Can't be late! Everything here was on a schedule, and time was the master and the princess was the slave. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to start out the other way where the person was too lazy. Or going for the person who's too uptight and to a schedule. Yes. Also, does she look a little familiar? Yeah, she looks like the same girl from the last book. Only maybe a little older? Maybe. Now, the princess didn't live alone on the island, for she had a friend who was a wonderful unicorn by the name of Morgan. Oh, look, the name's mentioned. <laughs> he had a coat of silver hair, and his tail and mane were woven of silk and satin. He wore upon his head a horn that was twisted like golden taffy. Morgan loved to play and frolic in the forest and meadows of the Emerald Isle. He would munch a bunch of clover here and sip some dew from the honeysuckle vine over there. He would chase after butterflies and kick at the sun, for his life was his own and filled with fun. Oh, look, rhyming. Yes. Also, more detailed flowers than in Misty Morgan. Hmm. Yeah. And I love the way the mane's done and the tail. And once again, definition on the body. And the trees have a little bit more detail this time as well. Yes. So, the princess and the unicorn seem to be similar. And the island is described as emerald. But there's no father here with the princess. And it hasn't been identified as the land of later. It's hmm. the island of dreams. Also, the moon behaves differently because it goes down every night. Yes, it comes to this island to rest. So it's like, is it or isn't it the same? Mm -hmm. One day, Morgan went to the castle to play. His hooves thundered and rumbled as he walked across the drawbridge, looking for his friend, the princess. He clicked his way down the cobblestone hallways, peeking in here and snuffling in there. Suddenly, the princess dashed by running hither and thither on her carefully scheduled rounds. Morgan tossed his mane and stomped his foot, anxious to play, but she rushed on. I don't have time to play right now, silly unicorn, she said as she looked at her watch. Maybe later, maybe later. With that, she was gone in a flurry of skirts. You can see the flurry of the skirts in the lower left-hand corner of that image, along with the unicorn going, hey, what, wait. Morgan didn't mind. He had plenty of time, so he went back outside to wait. 
he watched the sun slip from morning to noon, and then, sure that he had waited long enough, meandered back to the castle of time. I love how you can just see the tail end of the skirt. Mm -hmm. Once again, he clicked and clunked his way back inside to play with the princess. He found her winding a clock that had lost its talk. Again, he tossed his mane and stomped his foot, eager to play. Silly, silly unicorn, she said impatiently as she yanked on the cord of a cuckoo clock. I don't have time to play right now. Come back later. And she was off again, doing those things that needed to be done right now. I love how so far all you see of the princess is the skirt, except for that first shot of her adjusting the clocks. Mm hmm Though if you look here, Morgan's hooves look like they might be slightly cloven. And Morgan mine, they're very solid. Hmm. But if they're cloven, they're cloven from the back, not the front. He waited and waited. A day, maybe two, passed while he nibbled on some flowers and chased a bird about the meadow. He idly spent his time scratching his back on the bark of a tree, or taking naps in the bright golden sunlight. He waited and whiled away the time. Finally, he hurried back to the castle. You can see him scratching his back on that tree there in that illustration. Mm -hmm. Morgan tossed his mane excitedly as he pranced into the castle and down the massive hallways. With sputtering candles throwing dancing light about him, he wandered from room to room, but nowhere could he find the princess. In desperation, he looked in the basement coal room, and there he found the princess, shoveling coal into a bucket. He reared, tossing his hooves eagerly into the air, and whinnied just once, ready to play. The princess looked up, and with the back of her hand, pushed an errant curl out of the way, leaving a coal smudge in its place. She doesn't look like she has curly hair. Hmm. Yeah. It's very straight in the illustration. In all the illustrations, even though we've only seen three that include the princess's hair. Listen, unicorn, she said impatiently. I am very, very busy. Time is wasting and I don't have time to play right now. When I do have time to play, I'll find you. For now, leave me be. With that, she grabbed the coal bucket and in a puff of black dust zipped up the stairs. You can see that puff of black dust and she must be so busy that she doesn't even have a concept of time, which is kind of funny because she doesn't know how long it is between the times that he interrupts her. Or it doesn't matter because every time he shows up, she still has so much to do. Morgan slowly dropped his head and with heavy hooves left the castle keep. Morgan was very upset by what the princess had said. He had waited and waited, but she had never wanted to play. He wandered far away from the princess in the castle of time. He walked aimlessly until he came to a mystical place called the Misty Meadows. Here, the fog slipped and sneaked about the forest, making everything seem invisible. A lonely place, so quiet and empty that even the birds wouldn't sing. Morgan was so upset by what the princess had said that he didn't really know where he was going. Before you could say unicorn twice, he had walked into the misty meadows and disappeared from sight. Why am I suddenly reminded of never-ending story and the horse in the bog? I don't know why you're thinking of Artax right now in the swamps of sadness. Probably because that horse is depressed. The princess stayed in the castle, winding the clocks one by one until they were all wound. She did the chores, from sweeping halls to shaking rugs. She worked by the clock until, one day, she noticed that Morgan hadn't been around in some time. Hmm, she thought. I wonder where that pesky unicorn has gone. Pesky? That you told to leave you alone, and he's doing it. What, he bugged you like three times, maybe? She took off her apron and went outside to look. She looked around the castle walls, but he wasn't there. She looked in the orchard and down by the pond, but nowhere could he be found. Frightened now because she couldn't find him, she began to follow his hoof prints down the path and away from the castle. Yeah, now you care. 
the princess walked and walked until she came to the fog that shrouded the misty meadows. Oh no, she cried. He couldn't have gone in there. No one or no thing has ever gone into the misty meadows and ever come out. And we know this how? Well, that particular one's kind of easy, kind of. If something has gone in and no one's ever seen it come out, it can be assumed that it's still in there. Unless you know there's another side to it, then you could assume that it could come out of the other side and not be seen again that direction. At least it's not like, we know there's treasure in there. How? Because no one's come out, so how do you know there's treasure in there? Yes, but the only people who live on the island are the princess and Morgan. I love how you called the unicorn people. Well, they're not counting the birds and the butterflies, but the princess didn't live alone on the island, for she had a friend. So, yeah. Also, that's a nice illustration there. Hair is very detailed. And you see two hoof prints pointing right into the very nicely rendered fog. Yes. She paced about at the edge of the meadow, but she could only find traces of Morgan going in, never coming out. I've got to find him, the princess cried. She ran about the forest, gathering a great armload of pine cones. Then she began to follow Morgan's hoof prints in the misty meadows. Step by step, she carefully followed the trail, dropping a pine cone with every step so she could find her way out again. The mist swirled about her, trying to get her to lose her way, but still she pressed on, following the trail. Why do you need to put pine cones down if you can see Morgan's hoof prints? In case the hoof prints get pushed away. Also, the face looks a little odd in that illustration. Finally, she reached the point where she had no more pine cones left, and she could go no further. Loudly, she shouted, Morgan! Morgan! Come to me! It's time to play! But all that was shouted was quickly swallowed by the fog, and she was left shrouded in silence. Sadly, she followed the trail of pine cones back out of the misty meadows and into the bright light of day. Alone, without her friend the unicorn, the saddened princess sat on a rock at the edge of the stream of regrets and began to cry and cry. She cried for her selfishness. She cried for those times that she didn't have time to share. And most of all, she cried because she knew she would never see her friend Morgan again. She sat on the rock, large tears streaming down her face, and stared into the swirling mists of the misty meadows. She watched and watched. She blinked back the tears and looked very hard. There! There was a shadow! Suddenly, the mist parted, and there stood Morgan, bathed in the golden light of the morning sun. The princess rushed to the unicorn and threw her arms around him. Morgan tossed his head and whinnied impatiently, eager to play the games he had waited so long to play. He knelt down, and the princess leaped on his back. Off they ran, the wind whipping at their hair. The very last thing the princess did before they ran out of sight was to take off her watch and toss it far into the misty meadows, for she would never be a slave to time again. That is a very beautiful illustration. I like the way they did what's called god rays, these little streaks of light that um, come through things and leave an outline because of particles in the air. Very pretty. There is a time for work and a time for play. Share time with your friends before they go away. I just noticed something. They don't show her face that much in this book at all. Only two places I can think of. The cover and that one where they were shouting. And maybe that first page with her doing the clocks. No, she had her back to us. Yeah. Part of it, I think, is just to show, you know, how removed she is. Mm-hmm. I just find it interesting that that's kind of a thing, especially with her face looking slightly off in the one shot where we do see her face. Yeah, I don't think that was the most successful attempt at a shouting pose. It reminds me a lot of that famous painting with the shouting person, except the hands are to the side of the face instead of on the face. Mm. I think it's called Scream or Scream or something like that. I can't remember if it's like the person or a lady on a bridge. So, what did you think? Huh. 
Well, so many books make a princess's life rather one of idyllic and being very leisurely. And she had all these chores. Well, she is one of the few people on the island, especially since they never mentioned her father. And she's like this little girl by herself, not counting the unicorn, on this island. Yeah, I don't know that I would try to maintain an entire castle. I would like just close up the upstairs and just deal with one floor. I mean, you're one girl. How much room do you need? I mean, the castle's a sturdy structure and it's shelter, so I wouldn't surrender it. But I'd like take care of two or three rooms and that'd be it. Because it is just her. And of course she has no time if she's taking care of an entire castle by herself. Normally the princess would either be the Chalestine or she would have one assigned who would oversee the housekeeper, who would oversee all the staff that would do this work. Not that the princesses didn't work. Embroidery and weaving and kitchen work was not a leisurely life. Hmm. But this one, I always use this ending rhyme as a justification for not doing stuff. What does the rhyme say again? There's a time for work and a time for play. Make time for your friends before they go away. Hmm. Not that I had a ton of friends, but it made a good excuse. And this unicorn has a lot more depth to him than the unicorn at Morgan Mine. We get to see a lot more emotional reaction compared to the one in Morgan Mine who is very much a wild creature and afraid of being caught. And then the Morgan and Misty Morgan knows the princess is his friend and just wants to play. So yeah, they could be the same. She could be older, her father could be gone. Yes, because the dress design is very similar. She has the same shoes. Morgan pretty much looks the same. And we're assuming his name in Morgan Mine is Morgan because why else call the book that? Though you have the differences in the islands. Before it was the land of later. Now this is the castle of time. Like I said, it seems like they're all very loosely canonically connected. Mm -hmm. I think it's more like a storyteller telling the same story over and over again. Details get changed. Something like that. Oh my goodness, back when children's books were reasonably priced. Dollar ninety-five. It is paperback. It is not properly bound. It is stapled. But it is full color. And this has been Misty Morgan, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Thank you for listening. Want more Morgan? Go check out the video Morgan Mine. What do you think? Is it canonical? Is it not canonical? Is it the same princess and unicorn? Share your opinions in the comments below. Share the video, like the video, check out other videos. Would you like to get a copy of this book for yourself? Check below for an Amazon link. If it's in print, we'll try to find it for you. Just feel like going on a little shopping spree? Click the Ebates link. Sign up and get cash back for purchases at stores you probably already shop at. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.